Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and I'm with Marcelo. We're looking at his Breitling GMT watch, and this is an awesome watch. This is a does-everything watch, a lot like what I'm wearing right here. And in fact, we're going to talk about which is a better option, all right? Because they're similar watches in size. Uh, Marcelo, this is a 44 millimeter watch. Yes, it's a 44 millimeter watch. All right. Uh -huh. 70, 70 hours power reserve, and it seems in the secondary market, uh, the prices of both of them drop down uh, almost uh, 50, 60 percent. All right, so you can see it's got a 24 hour hand, it's uh, got a date, and it's a chronograph. So, first of all, let's uh, unscrew these, try out the chronograph. Now, the Iconaut doesn't have screw down pushers, which I kind of like because it's more convenient, but this is going to protect your watch more. So, all right, so that's the click. Now, it's got a very similar push to the Iconaut. That's one thing I noticed. And let's just let it run for a while. Now, 24 hour hand and the bezel is a 24 click bezel so marking time isn't going to be as good as say a Submariner with a 120 click bezel or even a 60 click bezel on many tutors but you can still do it and a lot more functionality as far as the 24 hour hand goes as opposed to this fixed bezel so I got to hand it to the Breitling there and as far as you know visually I mean this is uh, as you know a polarizing watch and, and a lot of people have issues with it and so I would have to say that this is a cooler looking watch I mean this is this is a funky watch it's got some interesting uh, you know personality to it but I would have to hand it to this watch as far as it being kind of a, a cool watch and um, and just uh, you know generally better looking now if you see the tachometer chapter ring well there is a step and I don't know if you can see it but it's very interesting and it gives the the dial some depth now, I like the hands on this Breitling a lot the minute hand hour hand very attractive straight nice amount of loom looking at the 24 hour hand very attractive with the red tip let's compare that to the 24 hour hand here I like the fact that this resembles the GMT 16710 it's all red it's a little bit different the triangle is a little bit thinner so I like the 24 hour hand on here a little bit more but as far as the minute hand and the hour hand, I'd have to give it to the Breitling. I think this is more attractive. Now, as far as the chronograph hand, totally it goes to the Breitling because it's got loom. It's got that nice arrow. The Breitling counterweight, it's not bad. I kind of like it. It might be a little much, but I think it's nice. But compare that with the chronograph hand on the Iconaut. I mean, that's a pretty nothing chronograph hand subdial hands the middle square part where it comes I guess connected to the pen in the center of the subdials I'm not sure that I I like that although I could get used to it contrast that with the subdials on the uh, Tudor Iconaut well each subdial is unique and I think that's kind of a unique aspect of this watch and there's different textures for as the subdials go as well. Maybe not as visually uh, interesting on this, but again, overall, I think it's more attractive. It's Looking at the indices, I really like the indices on the Breitling. Look at the indices on the Iconaut. They're okay, uh, nothing special. I'd have to give that to the, the Breitling. And loom, look at the loom. All right, you can see the loom dots on the indices and this is something I've never mentioned about the Iconaut, but there's no loom on the dial at all. So the only loom is on the 24 hour hand and the minute hand. So you can use it at night, but it's really, it's, it's not a night watch. 
nothing like this. I mean, this has has a loom, but there's no loom on the 24 hour hand, which is kind of interesting. The 24 hour hand has loom, but again, at night without loom on the bezel doesn't really mean much. So as far as the loom goes, I'd have to give it to the Breitling. Now, an interesting aspect is the 24 hour markings. Of course, you've got the bezel, but then on the dial, look at the 24 right above the loom at the 12 and then right above the loom at, I guess, the one o'clock indice. Uh, it says two. So you got a double reading uh, for that 24 hour hand. So it actually reads or can read three time zones at one time, which is really cool. And uh, right now it's reading just after three in the morning uh, on the bezel and on the dial. Now you can change this. And, and so now it's reading four o'clock in, no, five o'clock in the morning on the bezel three o'clock in the morning on the 24 hour hand and then of course the local time okay guys so we get to my issue with the watch and it has to do with the chronograph and the timing now look at that sub dial on the right i started this video about 14 or 15 minutes ago and pretty quickly after i pushed the timer and you can see that well it doesn't read 14 or 15 minutes it it reads uh looks to be well 20 uh 25 and so what this is this subdial here is it's a, a 15 minute subdial and so you got to do math to use it uh which is crazy i mean i i it essentially renders the chronograph useless for me because it's so confusing if i look at my phone, I can see that we're the 15 minute mark. Um, but if I look at this sub dial, I, I guess what I have to do is I have to see that we're at the 20, 28 mark, and then I have to divide by two. That gives me 14. Okay, so 14. Now, I don't see the rationale there. So, as far as the functionality of the chronograph, I've got to give it definitely to the Iconaut. I mean, it's just very simple. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start this right here and uh, we'll see in five minutes. It'll be very easy to see. On wrist, I think this is a, a better looking watch for me and maybe for anybody. And to understand why it looks so much better than the Iconaut, let's get them side by side. Okay, so here they are side by side. This is a 43 millimeter watch. This is a 44 millimeter watch. They look size-wise almost identical and and they're both big watches, but I think this wears a little bit better. And I think the reason is because of the lugs. The lugs on here, as you can see, are really big and they, and they come down and then, and then they come in and then the bracelet starts and and I want to say this is probably a 20 millimeter bracelet and I think the bracelet here is a 20 millimeter bracelet or so but these thick lugs make the head look bigger uh, than it is it just sort of accentuates the uh, the size of the head and uh, and and the watch in general so because these lugs aren't so fat it, it just makes the watch up here a little bit smaller it wears smaller all right so as far as the bracelet goes interesting um, polished bracelet this sort of diagonal pattern um, non-tapering certainly doesn't taper as much as this as far as the pattern goes i prefer this pattern i prefer the taper but uh, i've got to hand the lugs for sure to the brightling and as far as the thickness goes well, they're actually very, uh, very similar. Okay, guys, excuse the fingerprints, but you can see the thickness pretty identical. In fact, if I had to call it, I'd say the Breitling is just a tad thicker. And of note is the domed crystal on the Breitling. That's really cool. And you can see the non-domed crystal on the Iconaut. Let's look at the other side. Okay, looking at this side, again uh, pretty similar in terms of thickness so you can see these are really similar watches uh, you've got the Tudor crown here my crown's upside down now and uh, I tell you I like this crown because 
well, you know, it, it doesn't get upside down or right side up. It's just uh, pretty much neutral. And I'll tell you what, let's stop it, reset it. How long has it been since I started the Iconaut? Well, you can see really easily on there, it's been five minutes and 20 seconds. No math involved, all right? So um, I like that aspect of this. And boy, that's a real flaw as far as this goes. Uh, but uh, maybe some people like that. Okay, so I'm gonna wind it and see how it feels. Now, as wearers of watches, one of the ways we appreciate a watch is the tactile qualities, and that's super important. You feel it in rotating bezels. This has an excellent rotating bezel, and you feel it in the pushers. As far as the press, I would say average, no better or worse than the Iconaut, but certainly there are probably better feeling uh, pushers out there. As far as the screw down crowns go, they feel smooth. They wind down nicely, tightly. I can feel that it's water resistant. So I'd give it a check there. And as far as the crown, let's feel it. Okay, it unscrews very nicely. And as far as the feeling of it, it's got a good feel. Now I'm going to listen to it and maybe put it up to the mic so you can hear it. Okay, kind of an unsatisfying zippy wind. And yeah, um, wines are interesting. And, you know, I think every movement has a different wind and, and really how the movement performs and the time it keeps is probably the most important thing. And to sort of get on it because of the 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 sound when it winds is probably unfair, but it's part of the user experience. And, you know, if you think about Mercedes-Benz doors, apparently Mercedes put a lot of effort into the way their doors close. And if you've ever closed a door in a Mercedes-Benz, it has this, this, this thunk that feels so solid. It feels... Uh, so quality and it's and it's an important aspect uh, to it and so even though it might mean nothing and we should probably overlook it a zippy wind is just something that um i think is kind of unfortunate and so the iconaut actually has a better wind with its 7754 movement okay so i'm gonna hack it okay so now this is actually the second take or third take and i'll tell you why because this is a tough crown to hack because it's slippery, um, it's smooth, and it tapers down and your fingers just slide right off of it. So let me wipe my fingers on my pants and see if I can do it. Honestly, I can't do it. And so what I would be tempted to do, and I'm not going to do this, is stick my fingernail in between the crown and the case. That's uh, unacceptable, all right? Unacceptable to have to do that. Okay, guys. Well, Marcelo <laughs> said that I have to put my fingernail in between the crown and the case. So, if you want to, you now, can. now, yeah. Once you do that, it's fine. <laughs> so, it's almost a shame that you have to do that. I mean, um, I like to limit my touching to the crown, um, but I guess that's just part of this. All right. So anyway, um, so I pulled it out th at the first uh, first click. And this probably does the 24-hour hand. Am I right, Marcelo? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Really cool. So just like a GMT Master 2 or an Explorer 2, the jump local hour hand. So excellent. All right. My Very hand. cool. You the sub-seconds at the 9 are still running. Let me uh, hack that. All right. Feels great. And... Let's see if the minute hand moves when I push down the crown. Very little. Mm -hmm. So that's excellent. That's something that Rolex watches do. I think that's pretty unfortunate. Something that the, the Iconaut does a little bit, but that hardly moved at all. Let's just confirm that. Okay, so we're at the second position. 
pack it. All right, let's uh, put it right at the two. Very nice. Wow, that didn't move at all. So that's excellent. And as far as screwing it down, yeah, all right. So as long as you don't mind putting your fingernail in between the crown and the case, and, and look, I did it, and it's not that big of a deal, so uh, it's just something you have to get past. And what's the uh, benefit? Well, you've get, got this beautiful crown here, and it does have an interesting shape. All right, guys, looking at the watches side by side, each one has its own set of advantages, disadvantages. I would have to say, if you're not a Tudor slash Rolex fan, I think the Breitling is the way to go. Uh, of course, some things that stand out, the rotating bezel, and uh, visually, I think it's a cooler looking watch. It wears smaller. I think it's got a better looking case. Of course, if you like screw down pushers, that's important. I kind of like the fact that this doesn't have screw down pushers on it because uh, you can just sort of use it a little bit more easily. It's kind of a pain to unscrew the, the pushers and, and I think it might stop you from using the chronograph. Now, as far as the disadvantages to the Breitling, and I think this is a big one, it has to do with the uh, the way at times and the fact that you have to do math and that subdial at the three, you have to look at that and then you have to divide by two and it just doesn't make sense. And I like a simple chronograph like the Iconaut. I mean, I can see that it's, uh, we've been timing for 19 minutes and 15 seconds. And so no math is involved. I think that's a huge drawback. I don't know why they decided to do that. Um, one interesting aspect is the the date placement, and that's something I forgot to mention, I just realized it, but I prefer it on the Breitling because the date is actually <laughs> the the fourth indice on here, and that's kind of weird. I like the way that they placed it in between the four and the five indices. But anyway, for most people, I'd say the Breitling would be the way to go, unless, again, you're a Tudor slash Rolex fan, or you like funky watches or you like to speculate or you want to watch where you know you're probably never going to encounter someone with it and, and that would be uh, the advantage of the Iconaut. Let me know what you like. Let me know which would you go for. I think I know the answer. Most people probably go for the Breitling, uh, but if you're a bit wacky, maybe the Iconaut's for you. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.